Speaker Boehner blasted conservative critics of the budget deal announced by Senator Murray and Congressman Ryan. Joining us now, a member of the House Republican leadership, Congressman Bob Goodlot. He is the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, and it is great to have you with us, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it is always great to be with you, Lou, and your viewers. Let me ask you this. I, this new deal, do you support it uh, on... Uh, on, its, uh, on the terms as they stand right now, about $85 billion worth? Well, I have uh, many of the same concerns that uh, the conservative groups have expressed about it not doing what really needs to be done. But, you know, you really need to place the blame where the blame belongs, and that is a president who will not do entitlement reform, two-thirds of our budget, a Senate that will not do entitlement reform. That is what the problem is here. We can't get them to do it without doing tax increases. Well, we've already done tax increases, and tax increases only mask the problem right. that we have with this out-of-control spending. So I would prefer to have a vote to simply extend the current levels of spending for the rest of the year, and I think many of these conservative groups as well would. But unfortunately, we don't have 218 votes to do that in the House. So Chairman Ryan is put in the very difficult position because he shares these same concerns of having to come up with something that is responsible. And I think this is a, it is a very small step, but it is a responsible way to make sure that we do not get those tax increases, that we start the process of doing a little bit of entitlement reform, right. that we're cutting more uh, than we're giving relief I, in the sequestration area, and therefore I think this deserves careful uh, consideration by the House. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I think that, if I may say, the deal itself looks like relatively short cotton. The tall cotton happens to be that in a return to regular rules uh, and regular order, uh, in both the Senate and the House. Uh, if that is the result, that would be worth whatever uh, agita results for conservatives or moderate Republicans or whomever. Uh, would you agree or not? Yes, I do. And that would be the immediate result, at least until we get to next fall. During this time, it would allow us to get to handling each appropriations bill separately. And that's important not only to allow individual members to have their opportunity to cut various spending programs, but also we use that to stop certain programs by cutting off the funding to them altogether. Uh, in uh, my congressional district, a lot of my constituents are concerned about a mandate based on a president's executive order on the Chesapeake Bay, right. a $16 billion cost to Virginia, no cost-benefit analysis done, no way to stop it other than cutting off the funding for it. So that gives us an opportunity to do those kinds of things. That's just one of right. many, many examples like that. Uh, Congressman, we've got a huge number of subjects I'd like to get to uh, with you, if we may, very quickly here in the, in the interest of time. Let me just, Sebelius today. Secretary Sebelius is calling for an investigation of herself, in effect, her own department. Uh, does that uh, satisfy you in any way? Or uh, are you astonished that her, at her, her brazenness in, in, in making such a proposal or statement? I think Secretary Sebelius would serve us all well if she were to step down uh, and the, the president would appoint somebody who understands how to unwind this mess called Obamacare. In the meantime, since I'm not going to hold my breath for that, I think that uh, the inspector general of her uh, department should be continuing the investigation of what's going on there. And that, I think, uh, is very, very important. Same thing uh, with Mr. Mayorkas and uh, his dealings uh, now to be promoted to a uh, leading position in the Department of Homeland Security when this cloud is hanging over him. It's all an example of uh, an administration going awry and now compounded by a Senate willing to throw overboard their own power to hold and check the administration by requiring that they send people that can get bipartisan support before they serve in these top positions when they use the so-called nuclear option two weeks ago. Now, two quick developments, uh, Speaker, uh, Speaker Boehner hiring Rebecca Talent, uh, aide to uh, Senator uh, McCain as he pushed forward the Kennedy-McCain amnesty legislation. Uh, that's got a lot of people, as you know, very concerned. I want to know if you're concerned. And secondly, where we stand, will we witness uh, Speaker Boehner have his way and uh, put forward, it seems that he is pushing for the G8 amnesty version of immigration reform rather than the Bob Goodlot incremental, thorough, regular uh, order 
approach to dealing with the issue where you've had leadership now for a good six months. Yes, and uh, the leadership has been uh, working with us very closely on that, including Speaker Boehner, who was very helpful about a month ago in making it absolutely clear that uh, not only will we not take up uh, the Senate uh, G8 uh, amnesty bill that you just described, but we will not even conference with it after we do our work in the step-by-step -step reforms that address enforcement of our immigration laws first, doing legal immigration reforms, and then finding an appropriate legal status but not a special pathway to citizenship uh, for people who are illegally in the country. We're going to stick to that. I have every confidence that we can work with uh, the leaders and their staff to continue down that track uh, and that's where we should stay. Uh, no bill is better than a bad bill and the Senate bill is very bad. And very quickly uh, as we conclude here, Mr. Chairman, your committee holding a hearing on asylum tomorrow. Uh, you, 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 you're talking about people falsely claiming uh, fear uh, as a basis for including members, uh, it turns out, of some of the drug cartels uh, to gain asylum in this country, uh, gaming the system, but the system itself is participating in that game, specifically this administration, is it not? Well, well, we believe that's correct, and we're going to get to the bottom of it tomorrow when we hold this hearing. But, you know, the United States has a long and strong history of welcoming people to this country who are facing real political or other persecution in their home countries. But now it's being abused by people in a number of different ways, including people who have no basis for fear of persecution in their home country, showing at the board, border being trained to say that, and then being admitted into the country, not detained until a proper determination is made, but then being let into the interior of the country, even with work authorization, told to show up for a hearing later on, and guess what? A lot of them don't show up. Secondly, and even worse, some of the people applying for political asylum are members of drug cartels uh, in Mexico, and their fear of persecution is being killed by the other drug cartel. That's not what political asylum was set up to do. We need to reform this program, but the first thing is to get the facts out. We'll do that tomorrow morning, and I'm very much looking forward to uh, this hearing. I hope your viewers will tune in. We'll be watching. We'll be following you throughout, as always. Congressman, thanks for being with us. Chairman Bob Goodlock, chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. Thank Excellent. you very much.